In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Narbox portable storage and video and photo editing solution. Coming right up. What's up everybody, Phil with Bull City Pictures here. Today with a somewhat unique in the marketplace item, I believe. This is called the Narbox. This little unit will allow you to, to edit video, store your pictures and videos, and take this all with you in a portable unit. It's got 128 gigabytes of internal memory, SD memory. It's got space for an SD card, micro SD card. It's got a USB 3 port, a USB 2 port, and a USB 3 charging port. So the idea behind this is this is sort of a PC replacement. You turn this unit on, you connect with your phone or tablet, supports Android and iOS, and then you'll be able to look at your videos, your pictures, your music. You'll be able to edit them. If you shoot raw, you'll be able to edit your raw photos. You'll be able to edit your video, create what they call a highlight, highlight reel, which is a way for you to be able to edit your video, also add music to that, and then publish that right away to things like Instagram stories, save it to your phone, you can save it to the Narbox as well. I'm gonna take you on a little journey. We're gonna to go to the computer here. I'll show you some of the capabilities of this amazing little box. I'll come back with my pros, my cons, my likes, my dislikes, wrap up the review, and then we'll see what you think down in the comment sections. So let's head over to the computer and I'll show you some of the capabilities of this amazing little box. Just wanted to quickly show you some specs before we jump into the application itself. It's got an Intel quad core 1.92 gigahertz CPU, a quad core GPU, got dual band Wi-Fi, USB 3, it's got two gig of RAM, and some of this I covered 128 gig of flash memory, four to six hours of battery life, and here are the files that it supports, MP4, MOV, JPEG, PNG, raw files, and then the video resolution 720p, less than 720p, 1080, 1440, 2.7, and 4K, and the frame rates it supports as well. You can see it's a pretty wide range of support. It doesn't support the Sony cameras and the Sony video. I'm not sure if they'll add that in the future, but as of right now, it does not support it. So I'm gonna show you on my, this is my smartphone, how you interact with the Narbox. And basically, you'll go through and connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot that gets created on your phone. So th this is an Android phone. I'm just gonna go into the Wi-Fi settings. You'll see that there's a, my Narbox Wi-Fi that's created. Just go ahead and connect to that. If it's the first time, it'll ask you for your password. The password is in the box. Otherwise, it will go through and connect. I'm connected now. We can go back to the app. And let's have a look around. You can see, first of all, that it organizes your files by date. You can see two photos in one video, and by default, it will show you them in uh, ascending order. So you can see August 8th is the newest, August 4th down, in, I'm sorry, descending order down to July 25th. So what this will allow you to do is look at the devices, and a device is something that you have connected like an SD card or like a hard drive. At the moment, I don't have anything. I've already imported my files that I need. Basically, if I wanted to go through and, and interact with these files, do something to these files, let's say I wanted to look at this photo, I can tap on the photo and actually edit this photo with some basic editing tools like you would see in Lightroom. Not as deep as Lightroom, but you can see shadows, punch, white point, midpoint, black point, exposure. You can also do some cropping, so you can crop your photo just drag the box around to choose a different size for cropping. You can apply that crop. And then once you're done with your basic editing, you can export this and you can export it to either the Narbox or to your gallery on your phone. So for this purpose, I'll just export to the Narbox and you'll see that it's saving the edit and now that it has been saved. So we'll go back and we'll show you basically what you can do with video. And also at the bottom here, you can filter on different types of files. So whatever is in green are the file types that it's going to show. I've got some videos here. Basically it allows you to select a video. And if you want to do some basic editing here as well, you can edit your video. And then you'll be able to 
drag your in point and out point so you can select what you want to be basically the contents of this video. Once you've got it done, you can just drag it up and that clip will go into what they call the hi highlight reel. You also have the ability to be able to adjust your video just like you would photos. Uh, not exactly the same settings, but you can see shadows, highlights, punch, very similar settings to what you had for photos. So you'll be able to do some basic color correcting here on the go. And the idea is that this will allow you to create a highlight reel and generally within a couple of minutes so that you can put something together very quickly on the run, upload it to Instagram, upload it to Facebook, your social media, and it will allow you to be able to share that very quickly with your followers. And when we go back into the reel, you can also add music to your highlight reel. So basically you'll select what they call a hit point, which is where you want the video and the music to synchronize. So if I want, let's just say this part of the video to be where the music starts as my hit point, I'll select that and you can scroll and scrub back and forth here, click on next, and then I'll select music that I've uploaded from my external hard drive. And the same thing for music. You can select the hit point, and I'm just going to select one here randomly. Click on done. Once that's done, you can see that the music is here. Now we can export this file, and I'm going to choose 1080 since this was shot in 1080. And then you can select to the NAR box or to your gallery. And the, there's a bug, I think, in the software where you try to export to gallery on Android and um, it locks the application up. So I'm gonna save that highlight reel to the NAR box. And what that will allow me to do is to be able to look at that once that highlight reel is done to look at that video. And you can see the tasks that are happening here by just clicking on the, those little arrows that are moving. Again, this is not meant to be a tutorial. There will be a tutorial on this. I'll get into greater detail, but basically once that is done exporting, you can look at the video on your phone or tablet if you're using a tablet and then also you can export that again for iOS it probably works well um, it doesn't seem to work well for Android hopefully they, they will get that fixed so these are just some of the capabilities of the NAR box I'm gonna take you back over to the camera we'll go chat about my likes my dislikes pros and cons and wrap up this review that's a few of the things that the NAR box can do for you time for pros and cons I'm going to start out with the cons. One thing is this gets really, really hot. I'm not sure of the exact temperature, but I've read that there's an active heat sink here on the top of the unit. And when it's processing video or photos, it gets really, really hot. Not hot enough to burn you, but it certainly does get warm. Another thing is with these import inputs, SD cards, you can only read one at a time. So if you put two cards in, it's going to show you the first card, then you can inject that and get it to the second card. The application, the Android application, I think the UI could use a little work. I found that in some cases it doesn't categorize the photos or videos by date properly. It's a day behind in some cases, and it seems like it could just use a little bit of polish. I haven't seen the iOS version, so I'm not sure. Also, trying to transfer a video, the video, when I try to transfer a video over to the phone, it will actually cause the app to stop responding. I've contacted support we'll find out what they have to say about that those are the cons the battery life they say four to six hours if you're doing heavy editing i i think that's more on the three or four side in, in my estimations and my experience but other than that i mean you still will get three to four hours of life this will allow you to take this little box with you on vacation it's a little bit smaller than a cell phone really pretty lightweight it's got sd storage built in 128 gigabytes you can connect an external hard drive through the USB 2 or 3 port, which will give you more storage. I bought a little one terabyte external drive that will do a good job of copying all these photos over for me. So if you fill up the internal memory, the 128 gigabytes, you can just offload that to a hard drive, fill this back up again and rinse and repeat. And basically you'll be able to, you should be able to store everything that you need with a one terabyte hard drive. I think you probably have enough storage for most projects. Uh, the price, $299, so I'm not sure if that's a pro or a con. That's just the price. I think for $299, it's a really good deal. The unit definitely shows some promise. Again, you can edit videos, you can add music to those videos, you can export those videos, and basically this allows you to be able to immediately access your files without having a laptop and without having to lug that laptop around. So I'm, I'm looking forward to 
more and greater things from this I've read and, and seen myself that their support is really really good they're really responsive and they actually do have a public roadmap if you go out to their website you can see their roadmap and what they plan to implement so if you like what you saw please consider subscribing if you do subscribe click on that little bell icon so you'll be notified of all of the uploads as they happen Phil with Bull City Pictures we'll see you again in the next review